Our God is still on his throne and ruling the affairs of man. Even as he does not change, his truths have not changed. Thankfully, God still has a people which proclaim that old-time religion, setting forth his sovereignty, and the old paths of truth where we can find rest for our souls. Welcome to Word of Sovereign Grace, a ministry of Paradise Primitive Baptist Church in Arlington, Texas. Get your Bible, call your friends, and sit back as we open the King James Scriptures to explore the glorious Word of Sovereign Grace. Here's this week's message. Church was good enough at my request to let me off for a month 
which they did, and that's this month, and here I am up here. But I felt it to be my responsibility to come again and try to, with God's help, to feed the sheep. To feed the sheep. I think sometimes one might lose the purpose of the gospel. To you and I that understand what we have believed through the years, what the Bible teaches is a simple doctrine to us that believe. And yet, others will try to make it so complicated and try to lay great burdens upon the people that believe God out of it altogether. But the Lord Christ came in this world. He was sent to the Father to do work. And this work that Jesus did and completed, no mortal man was ever able to do what he did for sinners. Sinners, sinners, sinners. And I want to tell you this morning in plain, simple language, we were sinners bound for hell. Right. A literal, everlasting, burning hell. Yes. But the Son of God came to this world because it was sin. Mm -hmm. And he knew what it was going to say before he got here. Right. He knew quite well what he was going to do after he arrived on the scene. Uh -huh. And he had the ability and the love, the joy in his heart to perform everything the Father sent him to do. That's right. Now my friends, when we understand why he came, what he suffered, what he died for on the cross, and if we have any evidence in our hearts that he died for me, that's what I'm interested in. I know that he came to the world to save sinners, and I'm a sinner. All the sin didn't come short of the glory of God. Now, Christ, the Son of God, spake and he said what the Father told him to say. He came where the Father sent him. And he did what the Father sent him to do. And he did. Amen. <coughs> I want to read some from the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians. And from two or three other places and try to connect these together. You know, time goes by so fast. Doesn't seem very long ago that I was a young man. And it seemed to me like age just crept on upon me. Here I am. Brother Crane, get everywhere I go. I'm the oldest preacher there. You might, no doubt you've been preaching long enough, I'm not going to ask you how old you are. But you know, if it wasn't for the grace and mercy of God, and I had lived through this time, I'd already be dead. And it's God that has protected me, taken care of me, and my loved ones, all these years, and God hadn't forgotten me yet. God hadn't run out of blessings. And every time I asked God for anything that was according to His will, He gave. And I believe that God only gives us what we can handle. And if we were to use what God has already given us, God will give us more. I don't, I don't only believe in the doctrine of grace, but I believe in the grace of the doctrine. We don't serve God because we feel like it's a great burden. We serve God because what He has done for us. It ought to be with us. Lord's Day, when we arrive out of the bed, we ought to be able to say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go up. Unto the house of the Lord. Amen. 
For he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his path. Amen. Every day. Ought to be a good day. It can be. It ought to be. Yeah. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. And my friends, when we, we realize where we were and now where we are and where we will be when this life is over, it should motivate us to serve God with joy in our hearts, praising Him, serving Him, obeying Him, and have that fellowship and communion with Him. There's not anything any man can do to be able to have that spiritual relationship with God. But there are things God's children can do in order to enjoy fellowship with God. And that's to walk in the light. As he's in the light and you have fellowship one with another. Not only that, but we'll have evidence that the blood of Christ has cleansed us from every sin. Amen. Now, beginning in the 15th chapter, first verse. Moreover, moreover brother, not a trial unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also you have received. Wherein you stand, by which you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless you have laid in vain. Now, remember, he's not talking about going to heaven in this expression. No, no. He's talking about here in time. That's right. The gospel will save the living That's right. from error and from destruction. But the gospel will not, has not given life to the dead. That's right. That's the Son of God's work. That's the Spirit's That's work. Right. That's right. You're saying if you keep it, if you hold it fast, hold it, like lay a hold on eternal life. Now you can't lay a hold on anything you don't have. But you can't lay hold on that which God has given to us. Hold on and don't ever let it go. Amen. Now, we find in this, For I have delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. Notice this. Here is a message for sinners. And I believe the old Baptist has a message for sinners. They have a message for the hungry, for the poor, for the needy, for the downcast. Those that seem to be out of the way. We have a message that's suitable for such as that. If you're hungry, thirsty, there's a message. Come by without money and without profit. Come into the waters. Brother, we have a free grace market. This is free. Salvation's free. It's a gift of God. It never was an offer. That's right. It's a gift. And God is the giver. That's right. Sinners are the receivers. Are the greatest gift in all the world. If you don't believe God loves sinners, why did he send Christ in the world to die for them? Great love had no man to this that a man lay down his life for his friends. We weren't his friends, we were his enemies. That's right. Yet Christ loved us, died for us to save us. Brother, he's still the God of the Bible. That's right. He hasn't changed. Same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. <coughs> you read about Exceeding great and precious promises that's given unto us. We ought to find out what they are. Yes. Did you, I, I know I mentioned this more than once. Why is it us old folks? When the Social Security check comes, we check the bank if it got there. My daddy used to be the worst. It always called before the ride. We get our bank statement, we check to see how much balance we have. 
Sometimes we might overdraw. We might come up short. How about checking our spiritual bank account? You cannot overdraw on that. There's always sufficient funds in that account. And it's not. But we don't spend much time, maybe, at least I don't, in checking on what we really have. Yeah. Oh, may God help us to understand more we'll about the pay our worthiness, our sinfulness before God, that we might appreciate what the Lord came to the world to do Amen. for us. The godly died for the ungodly. The just died for the unjust. By praying he did not die in vain. When he died on the cross, he put away sin forever right. by a sacrifice. Amen. Never to remember the Lord gives us no more forever. They can brought it out as a thick cloud, passed in the depths of the sea, cast behind God's back, and God said if they be searched for it, they'll be gone. Amen. You can't find it. They're gone. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin, from every sin. <coughs> That's the gospel for sinners. You read about those in the Bible? Thou didn't tell us in debt nothing to pay. Nothing to pay. Brother, we didn't pay this sin debt. We were broke. We were bankrupt. We were wrecked. We were ruined. Satisfied where we were in nature. And brother would have died there that if God didn't do something for us. Oh, may God help us. We say we believe grace, but we really believe in the grace of God. Wonderful message. Amen. You turn on a TV, hear about this shooting kid, babies having babies, young folks divorcing their parents, shooting everywhere. I want to tell you one thing. Even all of this going on around us, we can still go to a place where you can hear good news. You can hear about victory. Amen. A battle has been fought. A battle has been won. And we know who fought it. Amen. And we know the results of it. That's and right. you and I didn't shoot in this battle, but we're on the winning side. Amen. We tried to run press along. He paid the debt. He paid it in full. It's paid. God don't require payment twice. If he did, you still wouldn't have any pay. That's an insult to God. You try to pay something, don't let it pay. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. When he washes you, you're washed. You're clean. You're justified. You're redeemed. You're reconciled. You're only one to go with. We're not there yet. Sometimes we seem like we're already there. Brother, now I want to tell you, we're on our way. It won't be long as it has been. When we're going to lay this mortal body aside, no more sickness, no more pain, no more grief, no more worry. What a day that will be Amen. to be with the Lord. Praise God. Amen. He's with us down here by the Spirit. But because of what it is, someday we're going to be with him. That's right. We've heard about him. We see him by faith. But why the day is coming when we're going to see him face to face. Amen. We're going to behold his glory. Amen. We're going to thank him for what all he's done. We're not going to say, Lord, I barely made it. No, no way. Brother said this morning, you're not going to see the angel come get us. He's coming himself to get what he paid for. Oh, may God help us. Help us to realize our need of him. Some today have often believed that you can't have prosperity in the world and in the church of God. They don't go together. Right. We don't know how to handle it. But you let hard times come. You let an oppression come. You let a famine come. Then you'll see the house of God full on Sunday morning. We've got to the point in life where it's self-sufficient. We don't need God. 
Brother, we need him. We need him back. We're in critical condition. Without God's aid coming in to help us, we're wrecked and we're ruined. We're going to perish by praying that nation unless we turn again to God. Amen. Let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man is God. Let him return unto the Lord. He will have mercy upon him to our God, or he will abundantly pardon. That's the God of the Bible. This will apply to a nation. It will apply to families. It will apply to the church. Apply to us as individuals. Seek the Lord. Well, it may be fine. My, I want to tell you today, he's not far from every one of us. That's right. He's a friend that sticks us closer right. than a mother because he lives inside by a spirit. You can't get any closer than that. That's right. People read the Bible one time where they call on God. And the answer was, here I am. Here I am. Brother, that's true this morning at this place. That's right. We began to seek God with all of our hearts, our mind, and soul, and could hear that heavenly voice. Here I am. What do you need? I'm able to supply. Bless God. Amen. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the God, he's the father of his children. Uh -huh. You know what it is? For God to be our Father, us to be His children, the God that made the earth, the world, everything in it, and we're His children. That's right. Think of it. Yeah. We can look out here, see a tree, yeah. see a mountain, see a tree. We can say, my Father made that a long time ago. I'm going to enjoy it. Yeah. I'm going to behold the glory of God in nature. Amen. It's heaven prayer. You bet. Here I am. Uh -huh. You ever call someone, you didn't know where they were? They say, here I am. They were there all the time and you didn't know it. That's the way it is sometimes with us. He's a God at hand. He's a God that's near. He's a God that cares for his children. He loves his children. Sure does. Loves them always, forever and forever. Because he's God. Uh -huh. Are you spiritually hungry? Eat at his table. Yeah. It's in the kingdom of God. Uh -huh. You've got food on it you don't have to bring. It's not going to church. What you want me to bring? You invite someone over to have a lunch with you. What you want me to bring? Brother, we're in so God that if we thought we could put anything on this table, uh -huh. he furnished that table. He comes and serves those that sit at his table. Uh -huh. You're hungry? He'll feed you. That's right. He is the bread of life. Amen. You want something to get you high? You don't have to get on cocaine. Come and get a good gospel message. You get a high and you don't have a hangover. Amen. That's his whole way. That's right. Amen. People always want to get high. They don't go to an old Baptist church when the gospel preach. Get high. Get high. You know the Lord came down to bring us up. Amen. You ever think about that? Yes, sir. God went down, he saw, came down, did what he promised going to do a long time before they ever got where they were. And he broke them all out. What a God he is. He's our Father. You know, it's good. Sometimes we ask God for foolish things. Oh, yeah. You know, if I had a lot of money, I might, I might not even serve God. I don't know. You know, covenant is idolatry. Yeah, Love the money is not rude all There's nothing wrong with money. When you get money hungry, do anything in order to get it. You don't know how to use it after you got it. Better watch out. <laughs> Better watch out. That's right. Oh. We're babies, we often express it. Uh -huh. But yet we're rich. Uh -huh. Amen. We're rich. Oh, no man's like our father. I know. You see here young boys, you know, going to school, 
We're getting hard. My daddy can whip your daddy. No, my daddy can whip yours. Brother, here's one. We got a father. Nobody can whip and win. <laughs> you know, we look at God sometimes in the wrong view. God, He is God of justice. If what God does right, you can't question That's right. That's right. That's right. Let's be sitting there and go, what are you doing this? You don't have to ask anybody. You don't, you can't tell him anything. You don't already know. That's right. You can't help him. He don't need it. He had all power. Yeah. Yeah. That's our heavenly power. That's Who can quit him if he had all power? Yeah. Where's the one that's going to wrestle with him going to get his power when God had all power? Yeah. Both in heaven and on earth. And under the earth. Uh -huh. He's God. He's our Father. Yeah. <laughs> now look out there at you this morning. We're kin folks. Yes. We got a lot of brothers and sisters. Yeah. We don't always act like it. Uh -huh. Like sometimes family, one of the kids get mad at the other, we're having to think we like that sometimes in the church. That's wrong. That's wrong. But uh -huh. not to be that way. Love one another. That's right. Forgive one another. Overlook one another. Hey, Brother, we live in the world, we need encouragement. We need an uplift. We need to hear a word. Help me. I get amazed. You get to show, tell people their faults. They'll show you about 10 years. You ever notice that? You ever hear folks maybe have great difficulties in life in the way of nature? Why does this happen to me? What about them? Brother, if we're not what we did and what we deserve, it'll be worse than it is here. That's right. You get that right. Somebody, if you don't get it here, you're going to get it later. Shit. And there's no two-way ticket to one place I know of. It's a one way. You're not coming back. You hear big people that have hard times that I've been through hell and back. Brother, you don't go to hell, this hell is back. Right. You go there and you're in hell, you'll stay in hell. Yeah, that's right. You're not going to have another chance. That's right. It's not a chance in the first place. That's right. It's a certainty. Exactly. He didn't come to give a man a chance. Right. He came to save the man regardless of the man's choice. Uh, that's right. He's a sovereign being. Governor <coughs> of the universe. Didn't any of our father and our daddy do everything? This one does. Oh, yeah. Sometimes our fathers wouldn't even help. This one can. That's right. Sometimes you might have lived in an unbecoming way and you used your ranger's trap home. This one's got a chest in the lot. If we forsake his law, he's coming and not walk on his precepts. He's got something to correct us. We. You know, sometimes we get saying, why is God doing this to me when God is chasing us? Yeah. Brother, pray not believe that's as close you get to God when he's chasing, correcting you. Yeah. We all rejoice in it. God loves me and cares for me. He's correcting me. And I thank you for it. Amen. You want to have where you go, what you do, if God didn't correct you? Yeah. Would you like me to correct you? <coughs> Now I'm going to go ahead and try to finish this. For I delivered unto you first of all that which is most important. <coughs> but which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Now, Christ died for sinners. Uh -huh. He didn't die for his, he didn't have any. He was tried, but he wasn't tempted to sin. He because he's holy. That's right. That's an insult to God. You bet it is. For a man to have such an idea that he could, but he didn't. No, sir. Brother, he didn't have an Adam nature like we got. Right. He was born of the Holy Ghost. To say that he could sin is to say the Holy Ghost could sin and did. Right. God cannot be tempted with evil. He's God. That's right. That's about the hogwash. You know, you used to turn to church, where you get off course, brothers sitting behind him, take him by his coat tail, and tell him to sit down. 
Now, brethren, we ought to know the truth. We ought to be establishing the truth. We got all reason truth because it's in this book. That's right. We don't need a bunch of books. We got the book. We don't need one to tell us how to read our kids. This would tell us. That's right. We don't have to have one to tell us how to do this and just tell us all that we need to know and practice religion. Why in the name of heaven? You go in a bookstore, you got every book you can think of, and you got the Bible almost hid in the back. This is it. We ought to read it, study it, meditate upon it, digest it, and pray God. Amen. Give us strength and leadership of His Holy Spirit that we would obey Him. To obey it is better than sacrifice and hear it in the feather rams. Right. You can have a sacrifice and yet not worship God. That's right. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandment, for this is the whole duty of man. You know what duty of man is? That text tells you. Right there. Yeah. The whole duty. I don't get to hear about duty. Brother, it's a privilege to serve God. Amen. It's an honor Amen. to serve God. For all He's done for us. Yeah. Yeah. Saving us from our sins. Redeeming us, making us meet to be a partaker of the inheritance of the saints in light, to make us accepted in the blood. We're in good shape. And he did it for us. That's right. Now notice this. And then it was buried. <coughs> now they didn't bury a living Savior, they buried the dead. So he died on the cross. He died. He shed his blood on the cross. He didn't shed it in Gethsemane. He shed it on the cross. He died on the cross. He put away sin when he died on the cross. He justified us by his blood. He made peace with God for us. We cannot talk to God because Jesus died and rose again. Now, did you know? I know you know. You can always talk to God. He's not on a journey. That's right. He's not gone anywhere because he's everywhere. You don't have to go nowhere. You can't go nowhere. Sure. Think of it. When we're in trouble, don't we go? Yeah. Don't we try to handle a situation by ourselves? We find out we can't give up, then we go to God. <laughs> well, to go to that first, we saved a lot of energy. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's us. Yeah. I mean us, and that's me. <laughs> That's all of us. Thank God for such a father. Yes. Think about it. You don't need anything, he owns everything. Brother said one time he's trying to make up money to send to the Lord, but he never gave the Lord's address, gave him the purchase. And one guy wrote in and said if he's such a bad shape for money, he owned the cattle on the side of the hill. Why don't he sell some cattle? Yeah. <laughs> Not only that, my friend, but he owns the potatoes under the heat. That's right. <laughs> he's God. He made the world and everything in it. It's his. That's right. And he's letting us live in it. Amen. But if got something else we live in, if we behave ourselves, that's in the church. Think of it. My Lord, I think sometimes, what's wrong with me? Why do they have the mullet grows? Why am I cast down on my soul? Why am I disquieted with many? Heaven become brass. My prayers won't get through. David got the answer. Hope down in God. Brother, I've been there many times. I walked the low road. I walked through the rough places. But yet I'm still here. Amen. One of these days, I, I have so many appointments, so many different doctors. I get mixed up which one I'm supposed to go to and what I'm going for. And you know what gets aggravated? I'm getting just about enough of it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Give you a pill, cost two dollars, uh -huh. and it causes something else. Yeah. You've got to go back and get you another and take care of that when they call it what it called. But I thought one time that little bit of pill, two dollars, I'm gonna save me some money. Got me a knife, put that little tablet on the table, run a hand and I hit it. 
I never did find one piece of it. <laughs> but see, I didn't get any. They're not. I've thought a lot of times, now I know we need position. I know we need them. But I don't like to go to one when I'm not sick. That's right. And after I get there, I'm sick. So what's wrong with you? Uh, You're the doctor, I'm not going to tell you, you kill me. <laughs> got all these machines. You've got to take an MRI. Can't stand in all this stuff. And then they don't know. And I'm just about worn out going to the doctor. I get tired of going to the doctor and they're trying to preach. Yeah. Now, that's what it is. But we have a physician we read about that's been mine and yours. Never lost a patient. Right. Nobody ever died in his care. Boy, that's right. He didn't have an MI, MRI equipment or an X-ray. Uh, he knew the call to see him. Uh, he never charged you anything. His service is free. Yes, sir. And no matter what it might be, he's still that great position to sympathize with Jesus. Amen. He's always there. Amen. You don't have to have an appointment. His door always open. Amen. Don't you get out of the back of bed, you go to one and put you in a little cubby hole, I'll be with you in a minute. Mm. You wait and wait and stick his head in, I'll be there in a minute. Did that be one time? I said, my time's important, it's yours, bye-bye. I'm gone. Yeah. Now friends, I took something here a while back, it's supposed to hit me, and they were trying to trick the wrong thing, they didn't know what was wrong with me, and I did. Finally told him, I said, this is my body, I live in it, and I know my body. We're trying to check my heart. My, it wasn't my heart, it was up here. And finally, they discovered I was right. You go home. But the gouge on me, the punch on me, and everything else. Hadn't had any lunch, was upset. But I thank God, I'm going to live till he calls me home. I know I could have not had a lot of these hurtings. I have if I have ate right, but I love to eat. When I die, I want to die full. <laughs> I don't want to be any more than a heavy burning ground. I'm going to a place where I don't need any food. Amen. I won't need anything. I'm not carrying anything with right. me. It's right. already there. That's right. Amen. There's no room for our baggage up there. That's right. We're going to be in the head. That's something. Can you, you ever, does that ever so, Ken? Mm -hmm. You're going to a place you can't imagine. You can't, we can't conceive what's there, but I know he's there. Amen. And everywhere he is in the heaven. Amen. Sometimes we come to church, it's a heaven on earth. Amen. Sometimes we go, of course, we get to find you. You go there and the preacher can't preach, you can't say, you can't get to, we leave mortified. It's in a way to add the wind. And brother, when we go to serve God, we ought to search our hearts. Every time I get the pulpit, I said, God, clean my mind, clean my heart, clean my conscience. I want to stand before God's people in a clean vessel to try to claim, proclaim the gospel of Christ. Amen. Now I'm going to bring this to close quickly. When David was buried, he was put in, you know, Joseph's new tomb. But you know, his body died. He sure did. But his soul didn't. Amen. He was buried. Uh -huh. but thank God he didn't stay buried. Amen. The third day he got out like he said he would. Well, that's right. No man helped him to get out of the tomb. That's right. He could open the prison door and set the captives free. Mm -hmm. Walk out. That's the greatest thing that happened in the world. The resurrection of the Son of God. Whoever heard of a dead man getting up, yeah. walking away from the grave, he did. That's right. Destroy this body in three days or raise it up, he did. When he died, he was our resurrected. We died with him because we were in him by choice. Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of 
of God who loved me gave himself for me. When he died, we died. When he was buried, we was buried. He got up and walked away, so did we. He was our representative. Amen. Amen. Isn't that something? Love, love, love. Brother David called me sometime about a script and I said, he said, ain't hey, that something? It is something. Bob is my mind. More to read the less I know. Now, he had delivered us from so great a death. Uh -huh. Paul says, God had not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation Amen. through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, through Christ, uh -huh. in whom we have redemption through his blood, uh -huh. his sin. Brother Levitt, sin been forgiven. Sin has been atoned for. The law's been satisfied. It's been fulfilled for us. That's right. It's his right. You know, I read about the death and resurrection of Christ. And I, sometimes we we'll overlook his life he lived. His life he lived is our righteousness. Oh, that's right. Amen. It's been imputed on us as though we did it. The law don't have any claims over us. It's fulfilled. It's ended. Is that right? Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. <laughs> for everyone that believes the Jew first. And also to the Greek. Now this. Talking about to obtain salvation. This everlasting salvation. Amen. It's an eternal redemption. Mm -hmm. yeah. We've been justified forever. Amen. We've been reconciled to God. Yeah. We've been purchased by His blood. We belong to him. You're not your own. You're bought with a pride. Therefore, glorify God in your spirit and in your bodies, which are God's. Now notice this. In 1 Thessalonians 5th chapter, 9th verse. God had not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us. Sin, <coughs> who died for us, whether we wake or whether we sleep, that we should live together with Him. Amen. I like that word together. Together with Him. With Him. Wherefore, comfort you one another with these words. Now, these. Then I'm finished. And having made peace. Through the blood of his cross. By him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say, whether it be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometimes alienated in, in his mind by the wicked work, now hath he reconciled in the body of his dead through death to present you holy, unblameable in his sight. Think of that now. Let that soak in. Yeah. Love the church, gave himself for it, that he might present himself a glory church, not have a spot, wrinkle, and any such thing, but it shall be holy without blemish. He died for sinners to save sinners. He died for the sheep. He died for the church. He died for the ungodly. He died for sinners like us. That's what I believe. May God help us to lay hold on that. That's true. Hold on and don't let go. Mm -hmm. God laid hold on us sometimes, somewhere. And God had turned us loose. That's right. That's right. We're still in His care. Amen. Does not yet appear what we should be. Yeah. But we know that when He shall appear, we should be like Him. Amen. For we shall see Him as He. Praise God. Think of that. Yeah. We're going to sing. I show you a message. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. For the trump shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive in the night of the coming of the Lord shall be caught up together with him. Amen. In the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Oh, shall we ever be with the Lord? Amen. Work for 
comfort one another with these words. If that don't comfort me and you, I don't have any. <coughs> but God help us. We're standing together in some saying some suitable number. We don't want to do anything in the church. We have this opportunity to spend together in the church. How sweet the name.
Sovereign Grace, a ministry of Paradise Primitive Baptist Church in Arlington, Texas. Paradise Primitive Baptist Church is located at 5300 Mansfield Road in Arlington, Texas. Services begin at 1030 each Sunday morning. Plan to come and worship with us. To find out more about Paradise Primitive Baptist Church, visit www.paradisepbc.org. Be sure to visit our website for articles, video, and audio sermons, as well as biblical answers to your questions. Thanks for watching, and be sure to join us again next week. May God richly bless you.